Complex ions demonstrate a unique union between transition metals and a class of chemicals called ligands. Let's take a look at an example. So here I've got the transition metal copper and water is my ligand. A ligand is a species capable of donating a pair of electrons. So in my diagram below, we can see that that pair of electrons in water is being donated to that copper. And similarly with these remaining water molecules. So ligands are much like what we call Lewis bases, substances capable of donating pairs of electrons. The number of electron pairs donated is called the coordination number. So my example down here, I have what we would call six coordination bonds. And this would correspond to the coordination number. When you have a coordination number of six, as we do in this example, we tend to get this particular arrangement, this 3D arrangement, an octahedral. So that's when you have six. Let's look at some other combinations. Suppose you have a coordination number of two with only two ligand bond, two um, coordination bonds being formed. This would result in a linear picture. If you have four as the coordination number or four coordination bonds, you could get a tetrahedral or a square. Let's look at some examples of common ligands. First of all, we'll look at a group that are neutral. So water's a good example here. Other species would be ammonia and carbon monoxide. And we can also have charged species in the forms of anions. And they would be things like chlorine, uh, bromine, hydroxide, and cyanide tend to be the common ones. Now we'll look at some of the charges that are present on compact ions. I'm going to go back to the example I had up above. This number you see here represents the charge on the complex ion, or I'll call it the overall charge. It is dependent upon the charge of my central metal atom, or my transition metal. It's also dependent on how many ligands I have attached, or the coordination number. And it also depends on the individual charge that my ligand has. So in the example I did previously, we saw that copper had a two plus in the diagram. We would take to that, we would add the fact that there are six waters, but they're neutral, so they're zero. And that must then equal the overall charge, which would then be two plus. And that's indeed what you see here. Let's try a couple other of these questions. Determine the formula of the complex ion formed from the copper two plus ion when it coordinates with five ammonia and one hydroxide. So that would involve copper, we have ammonias, five of them, and a hydroxide. I'll put square brackets around it. Now we need the charge. So we'll go to our formula. First of all, the charge on our uh, transition metal is two plus, five ammonia at zero each, and I've got one hydroxide at minus one. So putting that together, we end up with one plus. So that would be my charge on my complex ion. This question is a little bit different from the one above. You're going to be given the formula and we have to work backwards and get the charge on our iron ion. 
So the overall charge is 2 plus. Well, we need to figure out what the charge is on our iron. We then have five waters at zero each. And again, one hydroxide at one minus. Solving then for the unknown iron, uh, we'll bring that minus one over to the other side, and it will then be three plus. So the central iron would have a three plus charge. So once again, the charge of our um, complex ion is dependent upon the charge of our central transition metal ion, the charge of our ligand, and how many ligands or what the coordination number is. Thanks for watching.